so the first thing I want to do is tab into edit mode and I'm going to hit SZ2 and that's just going to double the height of the cube. Now I'm going to hold control and drag this up, tab out of edit mode, user preferences and add-ons, and I'm just going to type FRAC, enable self fracture and fracture tools, and now what that gave us is a self fracture button here. So I'm going to click on that and I'm, I'm going to turn the noise up to like 0.8 and then just hit OK. And so now it seems like we still have this basic cube here, right? Like if I tap into edit mode, nothing changed. Well, actually, it's on layer 2. So now we have this. And I don't really like the way it broke that time. Um, so I'm actually going to undo that. Now there's nothing on layer 2. Uh, self fracture, and I'll turn this up to like 0.85. And uh, that looks much better. All right, so now I'm going to hit hit A to select everything on the broken layer, and X to delete. I want to save this as column one. And so now all I saved there was this one, right? And now I'm going to hit Control Z to bring back my shattered version, and delete the initial one. So now all I have is this. Now I'm going to save this as column one underscore shattered. Save. Now go back to Unity. And I'm working inside um, a, a I'm working inside a project that I built yesterday for like a game jam sort of thing. Um, but you, like you don't need my whole project structure. All you need is um, you could do this in, a, in an empty Unity project if you want to. Um, so I'm going into in my en environment folder, and here's the two things we just saved. And you'll notice if I bring this in now, it's got a rotation of minus 90 degrees. And I just think that's annoying. Um, so I'm actually going to go back to Blender and fix that. Whoops. So I'm, I'm going to hit A to select everything. R, X, minus 90. Control A, apply rotation and scale. R, X, 90. Save and do the same process on column one. Back on layer one, R, X, minus 90, control A, rotation and scale, R, X, 90. Save. And that stupid tedious process now fixes this so that everything is imported correctly. All right, so I'm going to drop my cube into the scene and give him a box collider. So now I can shoot him and the bolts ricochet off him. And you don't need a, you don't really need a gun. You, you could just do this by running into it, or you could destroy it with like a ray cast. Um, do whatever you want here. I, I'm not going to go over creating the collision, um, but any sort of collision will destroy th this cube when we're done. So now I'm going to go into scripts and create a script called Shatter on Collision. And again, your project doesn't have to look the same as mine. You can create this script anywhere in your assets folder. Just right click and create C sharp script. And uh, what I'm going to do is delete everything. And I'm going to override the on collision enter method. So this is a built in method that Unity calls anytime that a collider hits a rigid body, or vice versa. And uh, so. When we when a bullet hits this, I want to destroy it. So when a bullet hits this, it's going to call this method. We're going to destroy this object and replace it with the shattered object. And for that, we're going to need a prefab. So right now, um, I don't have any prefabs. I just have Blender files. So let's go back into Models, Environment. And so I'm going to take Column 1 and Column 1 Shattered. So this is the broken version. And I want to just drop those from the scene into my prefabs folder. Uh, you can create prefabs anytime you want. Essentially, all you're doing is just grabbing anything in the scene and dropping it down into your project window. And that's just going to save a copy of that object. So right now, I want to save column shattered and column one. And now I have just duplicate copies that I can drop into the scene. 
I also want to modify column one shattered so that it has realistic physical properties. So I'm going to highlight all of these, add colliders, and they should be mesh colliders. And now since these have such interesting shapes, um, you need to make sure that you enable um, convex on these. And that, that's just going to tell Unity that, that they're weird shapes and you have to generate fancier colliders. Uh, then I also want to add rigid bodies so that, so that each of these has mass and weight and can be pushed around. And I'm not going to tweak any settings on that one. So now if I go into play mode, I should just be able to shoot this and it just collapses on itself. Perfect. Um, so I just want to make sure I apply that to the prefab. So now down here, column one shattered, each of these should have the rigid body and mesh collider. And now I can just delete that from the scene. And now for this guy, I want to add shatter on impact or shatter on collision. And now I'm going to apply that so the prefab does that too. And now if I drop this in, um, obviously now these both have shatter on collision. Now let's go back to this script. And so first we need a reference to the object we're trying to create, which is col column one underscore shattered. So I'm going to say public game object uh, replacement and save. And now in my um, in my prefab now this field opened up, and I'm just going to drag col drag column one shattered onto that field, and that also applied it to the two that were in the scene. So now they know what they need to be replaced with, and we're just going to say game object instantiate replacement. And we have a few different options for this instantiate method. I'm, go I'm going to use this one. So the object we're creating, the place we want to put it at, and the rotation we want to give it. And I'm just going to say transform.position, transform.rotation. And so that's going to give the, the new object whatever the original object had for position and rotation. Then we can say destroy game object, and that's going to kill off the original copy. And it works. And now if we wanted to, we could go back to Blender and create um, more fractured versions of this cube. Because right now, they all fracture exactly the same way. Um, so we could, we could like create an array of replacements and then randomly choose between them when we instantiate it. Uh, I'm not going to do that here, though. Um, it would also be worthwhile to check the velocity of the collision. Um, if, if, if a bullet hits the cube going one mile an hour, or if the player walks into the cube, we don't necessarily want it to be destroyed. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I hope this was useful, and I'll see you guys next time.